Good morning, everyone. This is Cynthia Vanna speaking from Omaha at the Sump Memorial Public Library. We have, I think, 17 attendees here in person. Um, I want to thank Dan for his wonderful presentation. I saw lots of people taking notes here. Um, you brought up a lot of interesting points. Thank you for that, Dan. Um, our next presentation is um, presented by Crystal Dawson. and She works at the Bellevue Public Library. Excuse me. The Bellevue University Library. Thank you, Crystal. And um, her session is called Stuck with Pins, How to Manage Content on Your Library's Pinterest Page. And this is going to be a wonderful presentation. Enjoy. Crystal? OK. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Just got to pop up there. All right. OK, well, I hope it's a wonderful presentation. Um, Anyway, um, I'm going to talk more about managing the content within Pinterest. It's not, I'm assuming a lot of you already use Pinterest or know how to pin items and like things and so forth. So I'm just going to kind of touch on um, particularly um, the Bellevue University Library and what we do to manage our content and kind of what works for us and a few tips and so forth. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm going to cover the history of our Bell University Library's Pinterest page, just a few pinning etiquette tips, um, the Pinterest board management, how to keep the boards fresh, new, and exciting, and also some Pinterest statistics, such as repins, likes, and followers. You can see an image um, of our page there. I'll go more into our page later on. OK, I don't want to do that. All right, so the history of our page. Um, we created our Pinterest page back in May of last year, um, but we officially launched it and really started advertising it um, July 1st. Um, our marketing campaign, as you can see, um, we use ants because usually when you see one ant, there are hundreds following. So we wanted to get a lot of followers ourselves. So all over the library, we, um, we cut out little images of ants. Um, our entire staff pretty much helped us with that. And um, we can see in one of the pictures with the food basket, we found um, images of food from Pinterest, actually. And we cut them out and put them in the picnic basket and had all the ants traveling to the basket. So, um, and so just after one month of launching our Pinterest page, we had 75 followers. And OK. Okay, and 381 pins, those were things that we pinned to our page. Um, and to help make this so successful was um, we actually have a Pinterest committee um, that's currently comprised of seven library staff members, all full-time and part-time staff. Um, back in July when we started, we had about 10 boards, and some of the boards we had were Ant Invasion, which were our... Um, our marketing campaign, so different images from that. Um, amazing libraries, book art, food for thought is our recipe page. Um, health and wellness, more than just books, and what that is is, um, you know, dresses made out of books or um, book perfume or whatever, just odds and ends like that. Um, we have a new arrivals board, staff picks, Study skills in the summer, that was the board we had. It was um, the display case in July that we had, and it was our tutor center who created that. Um, and then text stuff that we love. But um, through time, we have created more boards, and we're managed th managing things better now that we know how to do it through experience. Um, we now have, have about 25 boards. And there's our staff picks page, different books that we like, staff members like in the library. Um, so I'll start out with a few, just a few tips, um, which most of you probably know. Um, when we pin books um, that our library owns, we include the title of the book, the author, the call number, and then we link to the publisher site. So um, I've kind of pointed out each of those things in the pin, if you can see those. Um, that way it, it takes you back to the publisher page, and so we feel that there won't be any 
copyright violations that way. So, I don't know if this is this? Okay, there we go. Um, so that's something that we do right there. Um, and also, you know, you want to use legitimate links, such as going to the publisher site. Um, I will show you an example of a suspicious link of something we actually have out there that I want to show you. Um, use simple descriptive captions. Um, as you can see there, I have a hungry caterpillar cake. You know, that describes it a little bit better than cute cake or Butterfinger brownies. That, that makes it a little more clear than yummy brownies or something like that. So um, you also want to use attractive board covers and you want to rotate them frequently. That way other libraries, if they follow you, they can see that you are changing your covers and your pinning and editing. So that way they know you're active. And then something that we do that I like to see, and I don't know if it's because I work in the library, but um, arrange your boards in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it just helps to find the pins a little, or the boards a little better if you are looking for a specific board. Um, and so on to the board management. Um, like I said, we have a Pinterest committee at Bellevue University. And um, we basically, we get together either through email or, um, or in a group. And we discuss, you know, what boards do we want to create, such as upcoming events, holidays, special months. So I kind of listed a few for March, um, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, um, March is Women's History Month, and then um, we have National Library Week coming up. So those are some things that we have thought about as a committee. And um, each one of us kind of takes one on. Like if we have, one of us has an interest in Women's History Month. Um, we have a part-timer who loves doing this, so she is great about adding um, or pins every, every time she works. So she does a good job. Um, and then we also will use the secret boards and then we release them when um, the board is ready. Um, you can create three secret boards at a time. So this works well if you want to really develop a board and then make it visible when you feel like you have a lot of pins to show. Um, a few things just to avoid, and these are kind of some things that we had come across and we're um, fixing them. So um, board confusion. Um, sometimes you might have a couple of boards and you know maybe your, your own committee doesn't even know where to pin things. That kind of happened to us when I was preparing for a presentation. Um, double pinning. Why create more work? I mean, you can pin to a couple of boards if you want, but um, it just makes it more time consuming. Um, and then also dull content. Um, you want you know interesting, exciting pins that people want to look at. So um, those are just a few things to avoid. And you know what we do want are simple, exciting, and engaging boards. So you can see a couple of our board covers there, and I even had to arrange these in alphabetical order. So the amazing libraries, area attractions. Um, book friends, and food for thought. Um, so a few things that we do at our library um, is when we pin photos, we do link to um, our library's blog post if it's a blog item that we have written about, or we pin it to other items to give that extra exposure. So as an example, we have um, for National Wear Red Day, we wrote a blog post about this, and then um, most of the staff dressed in red, and we took a picture. Um, I am right here on the end, so that way you know who's talking. But um, I'll go ahead and click on the pin. We'll see if this works. It should take us to the Bellevue University yep, library blog post. And it's best to link it to the actual post rather than just the general blog. So you can see our blog post and our picture again. So, all right, it works. Um, and then um, here's just another example. We had new student orientation um, last week at Bellevue University. So um, there's just another example of linking to our blog. Um, and there is our blog address right there, too. 
Um, as far as, um, oops. Okay. All right. <coughs> um, as far as managing your boards, um, some boards we have that we post them for one month while other boards are ongoing. For example, we have like a genealogy gems board and since that's library related, that's something we kind of want to have available all the time rather than, you know, President's Day or National Black History Month. We just kind of wanted it posted for one month at a time. So, um, so what we've decided to do is the person who kind of took the reins to create the board, they're the person who's also responsible for deleting it. This can be pretty difficult. Um, we have created some really nice boards for Valentine's Day and they had you know, we had 200 pins and I didn't want to be the bad guy by deleting it so um, I had the person who created it delete it and that way she could repin anything to her own personal board that maybe she wanted to keep. Um, and then also one other thing that we do before we delete the board, um, we might repin any photos into we have a special board called Peek Into Our Library for 2013. And so if there happen to be any events, um, we keep the picture, we put it on that board to kind of archive the year at the library. Or also another thing that we'll do is we'll repin any books that we may want to reuse again. Um, we have a secret board called Reusable Resources, which you can see down there. Um, and sometimes when you're pinning books, since we have them linking to the publisher and you're putting in the title and author and the call number, it's a lot of information to put in and um, delete. So we'll sometimes hang on to some books that we own because we realize, you know, for like President's Day, we'll want to reuse them again in the future. So, um, so we've created a reusable resources secret board where we'll put all of our books into. Um, Okay. We'll try it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then on to the Pinterest statistics. Um, statistics are good. Um, we at our library, we actually the statistics come to me. We have we have it set up so we get all the repins and the likes and the followers come into my email and so I took a little screen capture of my email and what we get and then I go ahead and put it in a spreadsheet so for example this is our March Pinterest statistics um, we can see we had 33 repins on March 1st and that says six, six likes um, and then as far as the number of pins, that's how many total pins we have on the board that we have added. And then the followers. So we're up to 326 um, followers. That was as of March 7th. So we're slowly growing. Um, and then my chart on the right is our repins, likes, pins and followers. I have July and August shown and then also January and February. So you can see the increase in the number of pins we put out there and hopefully you'll see an increase in followers. Um, some of the things that we do are, you know, you kind of wonder as a library, who should you follow? Do you follow everyone who follows you or, you know, what we have decided to do is um, to follow all the libraries or publishers or even specific boards that people have related to libraries or books. Um, another good tip is to follow profiles that have a lot of activity. As, again, that means their Pinterest page is very active. Um, you might see some libraries who maybe are building their page and they maybe have three pins and then you check back later and they still have three pins so you think well maybe they're not very active and they're not adding much but um, that's kind of who we follow like libraries and publishers. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our page here. Oh whoops. There we, go. Um, there we go. All right this is the Bellevue University 
Pinterest page. And there's just a couple of things I was going to show you. Um, I wanted to show you the um, suspicious link, just in case you ever do run across something like this. It's in our Allergy Free Eats board. Um, It's, I think it's our cover photo, the brownie toffee. Okay. It says it's from delightglutenfreeus.us, um, but when you click on it, it'll say suspicious link. So um, this is one that I would probably just take down or try to find it on the actual site and repin it that way. But I wanted to leave that one up there just to show you an example. Um, Let's see. And I was also going to show um, just how to add a link to a pin. So if you want to, um, if you want to add a link to say your blog post or something else in the library, um, you can't do it when you first pin the picture. But if you go back and edit the picture, you could go ahead and um, paste the link in right here. Um, you won't delete that pin, but um, also I'm sure all of you have probably deleted boards, but I did leave a few up here to delete just to show you. Um, we have repinned anything that we wanted to keep. So we are ready to delete the National Black History Month board. Um, and you just click Edit Board and Delete. And it does ask you a second time, so if you realize you don't want to delete it, you can cancel right here. But we'll go ahead and delete it. And now we have 24 boards. Um, but there was one other board I was going to delete. So, um, not the President's Day board. Um, go ahead and delete this one. Um, as far as, far as um, followers and who you're following, um, I'll just show you we're following 113 libraries right now. Um, and I just wanted to show you how to unfollow some in case. Let's see, who was it? Never mind, I can't find the one I was going to show you, but um, you can see how many followers they have and how many libraries or people they're following. Um, I'm trying to find one that maybe doesn't have a lot of activity. Let's see. <laughs> oh, here. This is the one. Okay. They have, they must have one pin maybe. If that. Um, no, they have no board, so I thought, well, we'll just stop following them. So, um, let me go back. Okay. What is it? There we go. Let's we'll click on the unfollow button. All right. So now we're no longer following them. We'll follow them when they create more boards and pins. So, um, um, something that we've kind of run across through our experience with Pinterest um, is, like I had mentioned, when we first started out with Pinterest, we created a board for the display case. But we, we created a board for each display case we had. So for July, we created a board. For August we created a board, but some of the display cases maybe didn't involve as many pictures, so um, we decided to just, just to create one board called display case, and now you know, we have 160 bins in there, and whoops, um, we just put the current March on top. One thing that I wish you could do, 
um, that they currently don't have available is rearrange the pins. Um, I would really like to rearrange some of our boards if that was possible, but it's not an option yet, but they do say that they're working on it, so we'll hope that they do that soon. Um, but anyway, it just works better to have one display case board, and then we add the newest pictures to this board each month. Um, and I want to show you, show you our peek into the library board, our current events. Um, yeah, it just contains photos from various events at the library, um, and we also have some testimonials from students. Um, our interlibrary loan specialist had a workshop on interlibrary loan, and then and using orientation and some library staff was involved, so we have photos from that. And then a lot of these photos will link back to different blog posts or other resources to the library. Um, that's just, we had a lunch and learn um, on Tolkien and then a uh, faculty member presented, so these are some pictures from that. So that's our peak inspiration. And 2013 is over. We'll just call this board year in review of 2013, and we'll create a new one for 2014. Um, right now, we do have a year in review for 2012. But these pins are out of order, so um, I can't arrange them. But we had a food drive at the end of the year, some lunch and learns from the fall, and so forth. So. It's just kind of a good way to archive what we've done on Pinterest, and we're figuring this out now, how to do this. So, um, what else? And then something new that just came out this week um, is like a web analytics of Pinterest. You can verify your website and get um, analytics and statistics on what has been pinned and repinned and if you have a, a pin going to a link, um, it will tell you how many people clicked on it. So that would be useful for us, especially because we link to so many things. Um, but I have not switched over to the new, I haven't verified our account yet. So they were working out some kinks in it last week, so I didn't want to mess it up before the presentation today. So um, anyway, let's that's about it. Um, I just wanted to show you the image I used on the front of my presentation. It's actually a push pin lamp. I thought that was interesting, so, so I included it there. But um, that's our Pinterest page address um, or our blog if you're interested in viewing our blog. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, if, if anyone does have any yes. questions, please um, type them into the question section or raise your hand. I'll unmute you and you can use your microphone. I know we do have a question from here, actually. Okay. Okay, this, uh, Crystal, this is Janet with the Library Commission. And um, I saw that you deleted the President's Board. Yes. I saw that you deleted the President's Board. So next year, you have to start over again when you have President's Day again? We're going to start over, and we'll pin new things, new recipes, new crafts, whatever. But in our secret boards here, our reusable resources, all a lot of the books that we own ha have to do with presidents. We already have, so we can easily um, repin them here. So you will use some things from a previous year? Yes. Can we'll you use them. That question? Can you repeat that question, Crystal, so oh. everyone can hear it? Oh, sorry, yes. Um, Janet in Lincoln was wondering about... No, I meant the one from somewhere. Oh, sorry. Some of the previous year's pins. We will reuse some of the previous year's pins, um, is what the question was. So they're in our... They're in our secret board right now, so we can hide them, but that's what we'll do. I have a question about the display boards. Um, when you put 
clicked on the display, your display board, it showed pictures of what did not look like displays to me. Okay. Um, Cynthia had a question here with our, our display case board. Um, she said there, there were some images that weren't display. They didn't look like a display. Um, these are the book covers that, of the books that are in the display for March. Um, so if I click on our display case for March, those are just close-up images of the books that we have in there right now. And we, we own all those books. So. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, there's another question here. <laughs> how do you rearrange the boards to put them in alphabetical order? Oh, um, the question was how, how do we rearrange the boards to put them in alphabetical order? Um, at the top of your page, there's a rearrange boards button. Just wait, there's another step. Um, and you can go ahead and you just drag it. However, if you were to get out of it right now, it would not save it. When you're done, you do have to click on the check mark at the top. We've done that a couple times, and we've gone back to our page, and it wasn't arranged. Um, but you do have to click the check mark, so make sure you do that. I am going to move this back before I go crazy, but we'll save our arrangement. I was looking at the library some of the library um, pages to see how many were in alphabetical order. And there weren't really that many. I kind of thought everyone's words would be in alphabetical order, but they weren't. So. Yeah. Um, and another question. OK. How long, how long has it been since you started your Pinterest board? Um, in July. We made it, started making it in May and then July. So you've done a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah. Yep, she wondered how, um, when we started our page. It was in July. But like I said, we, had seven, we have seven committee members. So we're able to um, make many boards and delete them and keep it new and fresh. Crystal, yeah. approximately how many hours per week are you devoting to the um, the question was about how many hours a week do we devote to the Pinterest page? Um, it's kind of as much as you make. Um, however much you think you want to spend on it. There's some weeks where um, I may not have time at all to go into Pinterest, but I know that I might have committee members who are going on and pinning. Because some of the goals for some of the staff are to pin so many items per month. And as long as I know that the boards are out there when we want them to be, I'm not too concerned with how long people go on and pin. So um, we just make sure we all kind of do our parts. Um, I, I am probably on, well, maybe like one to two hours a week. But, I mean, you could be on a lot longer. <laughs> it's addicting, yes. Um, kind of how much time you want to put into it. So, here's another question. Yes. Who are most of your followers? Are they other libraries? Are they library patrons, students? Um, um, the question here was, who are primarily our followers? Um, you can just simply click on your followers if you um, want to see. We have a lot of... <laughs> 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 Yay! Yeah. We have um, a lot of individuals who are followers, as well as libraries and publishers. Um, yeah, as you can see, 300 and... 34, I believe it was. So if you want to, these are the people who are following us. So if we wanted to follow any of these people back, we could just click on the follow button. There, so kind of makes your eyes go crazy and scroll through fast. But, um, could, could you talk a little bit about the motivation for Bellevue University Library creating a Pinterest board and um, what the goals are? Um, yeah, the question was, um, 
our, the Bellevue University and our motivation on creating a board for the library and what some of our goals are. Um, well, we've already, we already have a Facebook page and the blog, and Pinterest just, you know, kind of evolved over the last year, well, two years or so. And um, we just thought it was time for the library to have a Pinterest page as well. Um, there's so much more you can do, like contests, and um, you could take pictures around the library of different, you know, odd angles of things. You could have people answer what that item is. I mean, you could do so much, but um, we just kind of want to keep it simple. We want to keep it fun. Um, um, that's kind of what we're using it for, and then also linking to our resources, such as the blog. And as far as our goals, um, like my goal is to pin 20 items per month. Well, that's, I can do that. That's, that's pretty easy. But, um, but we also want to um, add new boards every month. We don't have a, a certain amount or anything that we need to add. It's just what we want to make it. And like I said, we want to keep it fun. Sometimes when you add in statistics and um, needing to do this and that, it, it loses the fun. So um, right now, that's, we just um, you can see our boards here. Um, that's kind of our goal, just to make our presence be known, really. Do you have signage in your library that, that promotes your Pinterest page? Um, we do. I'm trying to think what all we have. Um, signage in our library. Um, she wondered if we had signage and how do we promote our Pinterest page. Um, we have, at our circulation desk, we have cards that we hand out to students and patrons. And it lists the Facebook, our blog, and the Pinterest page address addresses. Um, we also have it on all of our email signatures, um, overdue notices that go out. We have the, um, the addresses on the, on the overdue notices at the bottom. Um, it's out there, I guess. It's, you just have to look for us, I guess. Um, it's also on the library webpage. Um, Oops. Oh, hold on. Um, on our library website, we have our blog, Facebook, and the Pinterest button on our site, too. So. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Crystal, we do have some questions from some of the other locations. OK. Out there? OK. Um, Terry Johnson wants to know, can you briefly tell how to start a Pinterest page or search for your library to see if there is already one there? OK. Um, some people that just have never done Pinterest before are wondering how you get started. OK. Um, to get started, you do have to create an account. Um, when we started, we had to be, um, or when I started my personal page, I had to be invited, but they changed that. So now you just have to create an account on Pinterest. So if you go to Pinterest.com, create an account, and then if you want to do a search, or you can do a search without creating an account first if you want, but um, I'll, I'll search for the North Platte Public Library, Terry. And we'll see if there's one out there. And pins, it'll automatically default to pins. So it looks like you do have a board because it looks like these things were pinned by North Platte Public Library. But if you go to pinners, that will show us. Yep, North Platte, Nebraska. Oh. Yeah, that's how you do a search to see if there is a library that has a Pinterest page. 
Um, okay. And then to, to start, oh. No, go ahead. Yes? Go ahead. Oh. And to start, okay. And then to start pinning to it, you would just click on the Pinterest icon once you're logged into your account. And you could just start searching. You can search by categories if you want to go to education. There is not a library category, but you could type in libraries and see what pins come up. Um, so this one, for example, you could just click on repin, and it would be you would choose a board that you want it to be pinned on, or you could create a new board from here, and you could go ahead and start pinning to your board. It's that simple. That answer your question? Um, yeah, actually, I misread Terry's um, part of Terry's question. She's actually trying to get to your board, trying to figure out how to search and find Bellevue University Library. And I guess oh. she's having trouble with just doing a search um, to find you guys. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, I'll find us. <laughs> we'll see. Because Bellevue University also has a Pinterest page. Mm. Um, and then if you go to Pinners. Yeah, that's what was happening to us. It's not coming up. Interesting. Oh. Well, I'm wondering if it has to do with the new Verify thing that they have going because oh. um, we, I could not get our account, our page verified, and I'm wondering if it was because Bellevue University verified their account, and so since our address is similar, I don't know if the web page, I don't know if that has to do with it. Mm. So instead, people would just have to go to look at, they can just type in the URL for you guys, which is the, for in your Pinterest. Yeah. Yes. The Bell Univ, Univ Library, I believe, is what you've got it as. Yes. Otherwise, I mean, you could go to our website and click on the mm -hmm. Pinterest page from there, but mm -hmm. I don't know why that happened. That didn't happen the other day. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, I'm wondering if that has to do with that. So, okay, okay um, we do have a few other questions that did also come in. Um, okay, we have a uh, how do you do the book pins? Are you taking pictures of the books and doing that, or actually finding um, like the book covers on the web somewhere? Okay, um, let's, let me go back to the W University page or or, or library page. Um, yep, the book page. The book pins that we have, um, such as on our new arrivals board, we actually go, we look up who the publisher is. We go to the publisher site and find that book or resource, and we pin it from their page, and then we include all of the information, such as the title and call number. So we pin directly from the publisher's page. We don't take a picture of the book or anything like that. So. Um, and there, when you start Pinterest, um, you can go to settings and you can add like a pin it button. Well, maybe not that. Something. Oh, I think it's on about, yep, about help and the pin it button. And you can get that installed on your computer. So, and it makes it easier for pinning items. You can just click on this little button that says pin it. And it makes it a lot easier. You can't. Um, I didn't want to mess with going through our Cersei catalog. Um, the question was, can you link the book covers to your catalog? And you can, and I haven't looked to see if that's how other libraries do it. Um, we just decided to go to, go to the publisher, because I know that was an issue when this kind of first came out when library, library started pinning book covers and so forth, and the co whole copyright issue. So that's why we just go to the publisher site rather than the catalog site. Um, I don't think it would matter, but you can, if you want to. Okay. I'm not as familiar with it, um, but I was just wondering if you could actually like, put the book cover up there, and then if somebody clicks on it, it will take you to the catalog, where it has the book cover. Yes. Um, as far as... Um, pinning the book cover to the catalog. You could go ahead and um, 
you could go ahead, instead of going to the publisher, you could put the link in there. And that way, when they click on the um, image of the book cover or the video, um, it would go straight to the catalog rather than the publisher. But you would do it right there with the link. Okay. Um, we have a question from one of our other locations. Um, Gail, I'm going to unmute you so you or Connie can ask your question. You should be unmuted, Gail. Can you guys... Uh... All right. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Hi, Gail. Okay. Um, Connie was actually asking how you set up, and we all wondered, how you set up your secret board section. Um, um, actually, you just create a secret board. They give you three secret boards at a time. Um, so you would just click on create a secret board, and you could go ahead and put the name in, select whatever category you want, if you want to select a category. Um, okay, so the act they've actually given you those boards already? Yes, they give them to you. But you can only have three at a time. And then once you um, make a board um, visible, you can't turn it back off. So it, oh, once okay. it's... Yeah, once it's out there and published, you can't make it secret again. That's another thing that I wish you could do. <laughs> Hide boards, I know, that was my other question. <laughs> yeah, not yet. I'll keep bugging them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. And we do have another question related okay, to well, the boards, too. Um, someone wants to know, when you move a board from secret to live, do the pins in that board pop to the top of your followers' streams, since all personal streams are chronological? If, they're, if they don't, how do people know that you've actually pinned those new items to the secret, from the, up from the secret board? How do they appear? Yes, more question. What was the question? If the pins are when, secret, will people see them? No, when you move a board from secret to live, do yeah. the pins pop up to the top of your followers' streams since all personal streams are chronological? Is that how they then would appear to everyone suddenly? Oh, um, I believe so. If you look at your pins after, you know, you know, I don't, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't looked at to see if they're, <coughs> I think it's just your most recent pin. So if you pin to your secret board maybe a month ago and you make that board live, I think it's still going to show your most recent pins. That if you've pinned something that day, I think those will still be at the top. So to kind of get um, attention, it might be a good idea to make your secret board live and then do like one new pin to it to bring attention to it. Sure, sure. Yeah, I haven't really looked at that. Okay, we have a question here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, how do you want it? Um, the question was, um, she asked about our committee. We have a committee of seven members, and she asked if we have a group email or how do we get together to do that. Um, five of us are full-time, so we're usually there during the day, so we can kind of converse and talk that way. There are two part-timers who work evenings and weekends, so we don't always see them. So a lot of times, um, I'm kind of the leader of the committee right now. Um, I'll just send out an, an email saying, you know, what boards do we want in April, May, and June? You need to start thinking about them. And I, I'll just send it. I created an Outlook group to just the Pinterest committee members. That way the whole library staff isn't getting all these emails. Um, and then they'll throw back responses of what they think. Their own email, yeah. Yeah, I'll just email them separately and, yeah, and ask them what they want to what they want to um, maybe create for boards. And then once we have a few ideas of what upcoming boards we want to do, um, I'll list them all out and say, OK, who wants to do this board? Who wants to do that board? And, um, and we, it's all kind of a joint effort. Um, one person is the one who pretty much creates it. But we all might come up with a title of what we want to call it. Um, or we all will pin to all the boards anyway. If we happen to run across something for St. Patrick's Day or something like that, we'll all pin to it. We all have access. We, um, we have a library account on Pinterest that we log into. So we all, oh, that's what you're asking. OK. Yeah, 
we all log in as our our um, special email address. So we all pin to this. Yeah. So it works good. I there's no way one person could really do this. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> Okay. Any more questions? Um, um, no one. No one said come to the other sites. I think Janet, did you say you had a question? Okay. Janet here has a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, Krista, how do you? Yes. Do you guys have a? Um, how do you decide what kind of boards? Are they all have to be library related? Okay. Um, no. So, do they all have to be associated with books you have in your catalog? Um, we do. Um, we have um, new arrivals, and there is someone who who will pin ten new ten new books to this every month. And we decided just to keep the last current three months; otherwise, they're really not that new anymore. So, we have about thirty books on new arrivals at a time. Um, and staff picks, those are all the books that we own in our collection. So, um, so yeah, we do own those. We don't, we haven't really pinned to other books that we don't own, I guess. Um, and as far as creating the boards, we've all just kind of thought of things that we should do, I guess, as a team. You know, such as amazing libraries. Um, area attractions, these are things kind of in the metro area, of certain events going on, and, um, you know, book art, there's so much for book art, and edible books, so we've all kind of, we, we, we don't have any rules really, we just, whatever we want to do, because we're the committee, so <laughs> that's what we do here. <laughs> can, can you open up the um, book art? Because that flower looks gorgeous. Do you then yeah. send us to how to make that? Um, yep. You can start following us, Janet. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, hopefully this link will work. Um, let's see here. Um, sometimes you, there we go. Just scroll down a little bit. It came from this blog. I guess it may not show you how to make them. Uh, with a closer picture like you just did, you can oh, you get kind of picture that it yeah, gives you an idea how to do it. Yeah, and you get there's some book art books out there that you could probably use to kind of make it close. It looks like you just use a map and maybe cut out the pages. And, yeah, that map yeah. has nice colors to it. It does. Yeah, love that picture. Okay. Which is why it was our cover photo. It was interesting that week. So, <laughs> now it, again with our area attractions board, um, I believe this event, oh, Three Dog Bakery. It's an upcoming event in March, uh, March thirtieth. So, um, so once that's over, we'll go ahead and remove that from our cover, and we'll make something else our cover photo. Um, uh, Catherine just asked here, can you show how to make a, one of your pictures a cover photo? One of your pins the cover? Oh, sure. I was having a little bit of difficulty last week. There were some glitches, but hopefully it will work. Um, you would just hover over your board and click on Edit Board Cover. Um, and then you can decide what you want to create as your board cover here. Sometimes it doesn't always look that way. Okay, that one works. Good. <laughs> um, sometimes it, you can go into your board. It might be easier to look at all your pictures. And then you could um, go from here and click on set board cover. See, it, it may not work. There was a little glitch there. but Or you could, you could at least look at your pictures and decide what you want and then scroll through and find it. I'll just make this our board cover, I guess. And you can move it around so it fits in the in the page there. Click on set cover. And there you go. Now it's changed. 
Okay, anything else? Any more questions? Um, it doesn't look like we have anything that came in from the other locations. Um, just one person would like to say if you could show that last slide of your PowerPoint again with the URLs on it. They wanted to see that again. Um, oh, that, sure. Yeah, other than that, sure. I think we're, um, we're good because that's the end of your uh, 50 minutes okay. here. So, um, Cynthia, if you want to take over. Okay. Thank you. Crystal, thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, given me some ideas to take back to Omaha Public Library. <laughs>